everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up the books that I read in March, except for the Book 2 Prize books, which I am making a whole separate video for. So look forward to that soon. That'll be all nonfiction reads, basically. And these, for my March wrap up, are basically gonna be all middle grade March reads. So if you like middle grade, stick around. There's just one young adult book in all of this, and then the rest, everything is kids' books. My official TBR was these books here, and I ended up reading all of them for my challenges and then also the group read which was um the brave by james bird the first book that i finished reading was for a book with a silhouette on the cover and i read small spaces by katherine arden this has been a book that's been on my tbr for such a long time and i'm glad that i finally read it i listened to this one as i was reading through on a snow day when i was home from work it was creepy and it was fun it was entertaining it was a different kind of middle grade read and definitely something that i will recommend to kids particular kids who are looking for a particular reading experience that it is a little bit just more spooky more goosebumpy i think they will quite enjoy this basically is about this girl who is having a hard time with life at the moment and with school and isn't really getting along with her dad at the moment and she goes on a field trip and gets stuck seems like they're in a new world as this like fog rolls around it's her teaming up with two kids who she kind of didn't want to be friends with and then helping each other to try to resolve what is happening, why there's this fog, and who are these creepy people on this farm that they are going on a field trip to. Creepy scarecrows ensue. Three stars? I think three stars. The book that I read after that was to read for a book with a strong family element, and I read All's Fair in Middle School. This is about a family that's all involved in um, the Renaissance Fair scene, so all of her family is taking part in this. The main character, whose name is Imogen, is getting a bigger role in the Renaissance Fair family circuits basically. At the same time she is starting to go to middle school to public school because she's been homeschooled this entire time. I ended up giving it two and a half stars. I really found it hard to root not just for the main character but for the parents too. I didn't quite enjoy how the parents talked to Imogen and helped her deal with all of these changes that were happening to her. I didn't also care about all of the side characters and I felt like this was a little bit too long for a graphic novel and too many like side plots that I didn't care as much about which made it seem like it dragged a little bit. It ended up nicely, um, but I think just the relationship dynamic that I was looking for and that's why I picked it for this family element wasn't quite there. Her relationship with her parents and her relationship with her brother. I didn't love this one. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Roller Girl as like a story, as a story with a beginning, middle, and end. It's just chef's kiss compared to this one sadly the next book that i finished was nevermore the trials of morgan curl this is book number one in the Never nevermore series which a lot of people on booktube have been reading lately and enjoying i also quite enjoyed this i ended up giving it four stars we are following morgan who is basically a cursed child that is going to face imminent death on her birthday that gets stopped by this guy who comes over and like takes her to a different world basically and it's about her learning what her knack is she has like a talent that she's not quite sure what it is it's also about all of these other kids who all have these like really impressive cool talents how they are trying to vie for a certain amount of spots in this like important society as they're going through four different trials i think it was three or four different trials and they all are meant to weed out to pick the like nine top kids or whatever so it was just quite fun really like light-hearted really sweet i think i love the banter i think that's what i I most was into in this book is how the characters talk to each other. It was very adventure focused which I also liked and how we're following these different trials so you're always you always know like we're ending this trial and we're starting a new one. I just like that setup. I just felt like it went really smoothly. The next book that I read after that was actually finishing the group read. So I read the group read The Brave by James Bird. This is a mm, fabulism, magical realism infused story with a like like coming of age, um, growing up, and moving to a new place kind of story, which is something that 
I read a lot when it comes to middle grade, especially like the coming of age and like moving to a new city, new town. We're following our main character, Colin, who has a constant, they call it a condition in the book. It's never like explicitly stated what it is that he has. But every time that somebody speaks out loud and says a certain number of you know sentences he counts the letters and all of those words and um, before he replies he always says out loud the number of letters that you used and so this is obviously used you know against him he's bullied for it he lives in california and ends up moving with his mom in minnesota his connection with uh his neighbor whose name is arenda and also seeing his troubles as he goes to this new school and at the same time learning more about his native american ancestry because he's half native american on his mom's side so learning about his mom and um learning about other family members in his life as well i think this book started so strong this book was a four-star read in my head at the first half and then it really just like went downhill for me. I think it's when it really started focusing on the neighbor, Orenda. I think that's when it really stopped being about him and him learning about his family and it turned into more of him and his new romance and um, the book leaned on that a lot, quite a lot and I don't quite like when that happens in middle grade books. I feel like a lot of kids would enjoy that. I feel like when I was that age I did feel like it was do or die. It was you know, this love forever. That rings true. I just didn't quite like reading it. I also didn't like how it was written. At first it was quite sentimental and I liked that. I thought that it was really sweet and touching and then it just hovered to being corny to me. There's also a lot of things that this book does when it comes to magical realism or fabulism that I don't like. I don't think I've ever rated a book that deals with magical realism um, or, or fabulism in highly at all like it's just not something that i like especially when i think that there's so many issues that if you stay grounded in real life and dealing with the traumas that colin has faced i feel like that would have been a much better choice for this book personally that's what i was looking for and i wasn't really quite looking for ghosts i wasn't looking for magical cures of conditions and diseases and disorders there are moments where like people are, might be butterflies possibly those things just didn't really appeal to me and i think that really hampered my experience the last half of this book there are a lot of interesting conversations about this book and how it represents native americans it's written by a author who's half Native American, Ojibwe particularly, and I will link below some stories about that if you're interested. I, I didn't dive deeply into that because I am not Native American and I don't feel comfortable saying to this author who is of Ojibwe ancestry that it's wrong and I also don't feel comfortable saying that the people who have problems with this book's representation of Native Americans are wrong either, especially when they are Ojibwe themselves or Native Americans themselves. So there's quite a lot of, not controversy, but a lot of discussion I would say about the merits of this book when it comes to those representations. I will say that it did come across kind of interesting to me that his mother was like never in the wrong and she was always very wise and she was always very good and like she was always teaching Colin something, like she was a Native American like moral teacher for him because she did come across as like very airy and not so much as like a real person. The next book that I finished was also about Native Americans which I thought was interesting but I think what this book does well is that it doesn't focus on that. It's just something that the main character is and it's not something that the main character is really trying to find out about herself or to learn about herself. And that's Walk to Moon by Sharon Creech. This is really more a book about uh, abandonment and a book about grief and a book about dealing with these changes that are happening. So we are following Salamanca, who we call Sal, as she is driving with her parents to go find out where her mother is. Her mother has left and hasn't come back. Salamanca has been with her dad this whole time. So now they're gonna go find where Sal's mother is and they are stopping in the way and like looking at national parks and forests and like stopping in nature, telling stories while they're in the car. Sharon Creech focuses a lot on Sal's life before this road trip as she is telling the story about her friend Phoebe and I love those aspects too because of the way that Phoebe and Sal come across as just like regular everyday girls who are facing a lot of changes in their lives and their like automatic thing to think is 
there's axe murderers involved. I just loved kind of like where their imaginations went and where like their dramatics went because to a T that is how I was as a child and I quite liked being back in, in that kind of mindset of you know like oh my god these letters must mean this horrible thing. <laughs> Life is not really about like violence to that extent for the most part. It's more about all of these unfulfilled dreams of their parents and how their mothers particularly have lived these lives that they now want to like be rid of and to be different people because of other situations that are happening behind the scenes to them that the children don't quite know. Being unfulfilled mothers in the 90s I want to say is a big theme in this book. Also losing family members and um, learning information. Not living up to the expectations of society as mothers and as women. Um, and these are things that the two main girls are trying to learn and trying to understand more about. There's also just lovely aspects in this of the grandparents and their relationship with Sal and I love those parts so much. They brought so much light to the book. The way that they speak to each other, just just the sweet banter between them. Quite a lovely book. I ended up rating it four and a half stars and I also love the audiobook narration of it. And now I know why it won the Newberry. I really loved it. And I read this one for reading a book from the decade that I was born. So last but not least for my middle grade March wrap up of the books that were on my TBR, I read the last day, the last two days, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And this is a Newberry honor book. This book is by Grace Lynn. It focuses on this folktale, this main character who is learning all of these stories from her dad and how these stories make her want to change the fortune of her family. Her family is very very poor and it's very hard to get by where they live so it's about Min Lee, the main character, trying to change that fortune by going to talk to some important person and it's about all of the other stories that she learns along the way right so one story sets her off and then as she meets other people and creatures you know dragons um she learns more about other stories all of these stories really intertwine and come together at the end in a way that it's really satisfying that i think is really well done because you get to see the change and the development of these characters throughout the story where at first i was kind of like okay where are you going with this and then by the end of it you really see how each person and each creature has changed as a result of this adventure that you're on. The way that the book is set up with the little stories and then also it has um, beautiful pictures drawn by Grace Lynn herself. So those are interspersed in the book as well. And I also listened to this one on audiobook and enjoyed it quite an audiobook as well. So let's talk about the other four random books that I finished during this time. Most of them are graphic novels, honestly. One of them is Allergic, and this is by Megan Wagner Lloyd and Michelle Mee Nutter. This is a juvenile graphic novel that looks at a main character who wants to own a pet. She really wants a dog. And then she finds out she is allergic to anything furry or with feathers. Therefore, she can't have a lot of pets. So then she tries to find out what pet she can have. Other hijinks kind of ensue. She tells a couple lies. She realizes some of those lies aren't great to tell. She makes friends. She makes friends and kind of has a falling out with a friend and that's them repairing that relationship. So there's quite a lot of realistic elements in this that I think kids would love. This is a perfect Raina Telgemeier read-alike. I thought it was also just quite sweet the way that the family came across this. Definitely comparing the family in All's Fair and then comparing the family in Allergic, I really felt like the family in here, while there were like younger siblings, especially younger brothers, who might be annoying might act in particular ways that are bothersome to the main character i think you still get the sense that this is a tight-knit family and that they all care for each other there's not as much blame on the children in this book as there was blame on imogen and all's fair for just living and making mistakes as a child. The people in this book are a little bit more understanding. I would definitely recommend this book. I quite loved it, especially if you're an animal lover. I think you will like this one as well. It's really, really sweet. And I ended up giving this one four stars. After that, I read Katie the Cat Sitter by Colleen at AF Benable and Stephanie Yu. This was not what I expected it was going to be. I thought it was going to be another like realistic book. This is what it looks like on the inside, which I love the soft Kind of illustrations by Stephanie Yu. Definitely something that kept me wanting to read. This book is about a girl who is taking care of these cats to try to raise money so that she could go to a summer camp with her like cool friends and then she finds out that these cats like all have 
secret talents and they have like military training and then she starts questioning why there are so many cats in this apartment that she is taking care of and what the owner of the apartment is hiding there's superheroes a lot of superheroes and villains and you're trying to find out why some of these villains and characters are acting the way that they are it's kind of like a training book for the main character to become a superhero herself it seems like there are going to be more in the series but that's kind of the vibe that i got from reading this one i don't think i'm going to continue on in the series i think it's enough for me to know how to recommend it to kids at the library it is kind of unbelievable and i think that's not quite what I, i'm looking for in a graphic novel series that there's like actual superheroes and everybody understands that they're superheroes and it's not weird that they're superheroes in this book that's what i thought about katie's cat sitter i think i gave this one three stars all right the last graphic novel is a young adult one and it's a map to the sun by Slong leong i've been trying to finish this book for a while it's a denser graphic novel for sure it's one that took me a while there's a lot of small text and the colors too sometimes make it a little difficult and you really have to concentrate it does have this palette of using gradients and they change throughout the entire book and they definitely set the mood for what's happening in the book there's a lot of smaller panels too so you really have to pay attention to everything that's happening in the book we're following these girls who are going to start a new basketball team and they don't have quite a lot of money the boys team does not want them practicing on their court and things like that but then they find that this basketball team is really helpful to their growth as they are all dealing with their own like familial issues and and their own like personal identity issues some of them are dealing with having sisters who are addicted to drugs they're dealing with parents who aren't really there they're dealing with their weight and the way that they look and how they are perceived by the world so they're really grappling with a lot of dense and heavier issues and it's about how they start bonding with each other and how basketball helps them grow i like this book i didn't love this book i think i just gave it three stars i didn't understand where we ended with the characters and there's a lot of angst in this book for sure that i think a lot of people won't really love as much and then last but not least i have a short book called the one thing you'd save by linda su park it's illustrated by robert say hang linda su park is writing from the point of view of a teacher and she asks different students in the class what they would save in a fire if everybody in their family was safe all of their pets were safe and everything was safe like that what material thing would you save from a fire this conversation of like personal mementos and how some people would want to save mementos how some would want to save technological devices like phones or tablets or computers um, because they have all of their information in them they're all done in sijo which is a traditional korean poetry way of writing poetry and i ended up giving this book three stars it's a really nice short maybe like 20 minute read if you are looking for something kind of like a palette cleanser i would say so that is it for all of the books that i wanted to talk about for my march wrap up definitely stay tuned for my booktube prize wrap up if you're interested in that i know i've been talking about the booktube prize books for months and this is kind of the satisfying conclusion is this video thank you so much for watching if you've read any of these books or would like to read any of them let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in my next video bye bye